It has been amazing to have met Pius. And he has really inspired me through his talk on uh, investing with the purpose. The right way with him today taught me two things. Wealth creation is an art. It has so little to do with money and so much to do with uh, people. The things I hear do pious, I've never had them anywhere else. I'd love to meet him again. So, what Warren Buffett is challenging us is that we have a choice to make. Everyone who is in this room, you have a choice to make. You are either going to, from this point forward, you are either going to be making money while you sleep, or you are going to work until you... Mambo ni mawi? Mawi. Now, if you choose to work until you die, then just know this will be the story. But if you choose to make money while you sleep, then continue listening to me. Because I am here about that. So, this kind of money that we make while we sleep, it is called passive income. It is called what? Passive income. And this is money that shows up in our bank account, even when it don't show up in the, in the office, or at work. Your business. I'm addressing both employees and business owners. We are all on this boat. We are all on this boat. Yeah? So, how much money are you making when you, when you don't show up in the office? One of our customers said something very profound that I will never forget. I carry it with me every day. She said, even when it is very little, this passive income, she said, it is the sweetest income of them all. When you see that bank alert, and it, is, it has nothing to do with your salary, or your hard-earned business income, some 100,000 has checked in from dividend, some one, one million has checked in from Nabo Capital. There is a sweetness you feel that is very different. Because it is passive, passive income. During, in, in 2013, a survey was conducted in America. And they found out that Warren Buffett, whom we all know, was making $1.5 million every hour, not every day, every hour, even when he was sleeping. So this man, whatever he was saying, if you, if you don't make money while you sleep, you are likely to work hard until you die. It's true, he lives by that, okay? He was making $1.5 million in 2013, not 2024, that is 11 years ago. $1.5 million every hour and even when he was sleeping. Now, the other wealthy people around him, especially they are, they, they are tech, the ones who are connected to the tech, technology companies, were making an average of $1.3 million every hour even when they were sleeping. So there is something common about the richest 1% who own about 50% of global wealth. That all of them, they depend on what? They depend on passive income. So I keep asking myself, how many heads do they have? <laughs> they have one head like me, and some of them have actually a smaller head than mine. So, they must know something that I don't know, and that thing is what is making the, the difference. So, and that thing is called passive, passive income. Passive income is what will change all those regrets into positive. I want to say I spent the most time with my family. 
I want to say I have built a good network of friends and relationships. I want to say I worked hard, but I worked smart. I want to turn all those, these five things to my advantage. So the question this evening to you and I, because I'm also on this journey, how can we switch gears to make money while we, while we sleep? How can we switch gears? Something needs to shift. Something needs to shift. Because right now, if all of us were making money while we, while we are here, we will say, after this uh, party is over, uh, I'll say, please, I have an open check. Continue enjoying yourself. We'll be competing on who, you know, there's no need of stopping something. Nice. We build the relationships. Isn't it, eh? So, last year, we spoke here. Today, I want us to go a, 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 a level deeper, more specific. So there are three types of portfolio that I believe will make you money while you sleep. Wealth creation is an art. Is an art. It is not something you just jump into and do it according to what you are see, he's seeing your neighbor doing. It is something that is very personal, must be tailored to you, and must be built like you're building a house. A house is built from foundation. One of the things I keep saying that concerns me the most is when I look around my environment, and my environment is full of what, you'd, what the so-called middle class families. They have a nice home, they live in a good neighborhood, they have two cars packed, packed outside, their kids go to a decent school, yeah? They have, you know, they are, in, they are socializing in the nice clubs, they play golf every other day, And then I cast my eye 20 years from today and ask myself, will these families be able to sustain the lifestyle that they're living today? And I'm always saddened because I can see we are not ready. We are not? We are not ready. And there is no real action moving towards that. And it has nothing to do with how much money we have. It has everything to do, everything to do with principles and discipline. Principles and discipline. So these three portfolios I'm prescribing are not really optional. Are portfolios that I believe everyone must have in one form or the other. The first one is a lifestyle portfolio. Tell your neighbor lifestyle portfolio. <laughs> there is a popular Warren Buffett quote. Today I'm with Warren Buffett. It's like I, I was dreaming with him. That goes like this. Only when the tide goes out do you know who has been swimming naked. <laughs> Only when the tide goes out do you know who has been swimming naked. And uh, again, it is a figurative word. My mom used to say to us as we were growing up, you will never know the bitter pill of poverty until the day you will not know where the next meal is coming from. Has anybody been somewhere there? I know some people have been there. And that day came for us as a family. 1988, I'll never forget. My dad lost his job. And we moved from here as a family to 
abject poverty. Things like paying rent, paying school fees, paying for utility bills, they became luxurious. The thing that troubled us the most is that we needed to trust God every day for a meal. However that meal came, whether it was rice and uh, strungi, you know nowadays I see people drinking black tea, I'm like, seriously? After we have worked so hard. <laughs> but black tea was supposed to show how badly you are doing. <laughs> you know. So, for me, the thing that registered in my mind is how is it possible that yesterday we were, being, we were doing big shopping, we were coming home with big shopping bags from Uchumi then. Yeah? We were excited to open the boot of the car, carry bags into the house. You know, big shopping every day, there was meat in the house, and we were like, we don't like meat. Now you are like, where can we find meat? You know, it bothered me so much. What went wrong? How is it possible? But the truth of the matter is, the tide went out and we were found what? We were swimming naked. So the question to all of us here, are we swimming naked? Yes. 